keeping an aircraft in a specified area for a specified amount of time. That's what holding patterns do. Reasons for this includes traffic delays and waiting for weather to improve for landing. You may have already heard a bit about holding patterns and their types of entries, direct, teardrop, and parallel. Understanding how to identify which of these entries to select each time is a common goal for instrument pilots. Methods such as sketching out a layout on a heading indicator or a kneeboard, the thumb, hand, or pen method, and a few other techniques have been used to accomplish this. So there is more than one valid method to figure which of these three entries is suitable for any given flight situation. Also, personal preferences and the type of flight equipment available may have influence on which method works best for each individual. Though the topic of holding patterns surrounds a good amount of technical information, in this session we will specifically focus on holding pattern entries and observing them visually. Executing the correct entry will allow an aircraft to safely join the direction of the holding cycle while remaining in a designated area. And I use the title intuitive holding pattern entries because you already know how to identify which entry fits any given situation. And here's how. To do this, it's essential to first remember the nature of each type of entry. Every holding pattern has what we call the inbound leg, the straight path going towards the fix. The fix is a point used to establish and maintain the position of an aircraft while holding or cycling around. Also remember that the aircraft is expected to remain inside this protected area which is outlined by this oval shaped course. We can look at a given holding instruction and the aircraft's relative position to see which of the three possible holding entry types would be most practical to carry out. Practical as in figuring which of the three possible entries would require the smallest degree of turning for the aircraft upon entering the hold. This will be the main objective in all holding entries. For the first example, we have a holding pattern set up with a fix placed right here and an airplane coming from right there. We can tell that this holding pattern would be going in a clockwise cycle as a result of a right turn after crossing the fix. With this setup, the aircraft could fly towards the fix, comfortably aligning with the inbound leg. This entry works well when the aircraft and the inbound leg are generally proceeding in the same direction. Here is another example that lines up well for the direct entry. What is different in the next type of entry is that the aircraft will first fly over the fix, initially tracking the inbound leg in its opposite direction. Upon reaching the end of the inbound leg, the aircraft will turn back around towards the fix to cross it again, and from that point on proceed through the actual holding direction, including the inbound leg this time. And for the last type of entry, the teardrop, the aircraft will fly a path that will first go over the fix into the protected area of the holding pattern, at about 30 degrees off from the inbound leg and then turning back around towards the fix lining up with the inbound leg. For each of these entries, I want to emphasize their initial segment in the entry procedures. In other words, what angle of direction will the aircraft first take upon starting the entry procedure? As we just saw, the teardrop will begin with a 30 degree course off the inbound leg and the parallel entry requires us to overlap the inbound leg going in the opposite direction from the fix, and the direct entry allowing us to flow directly towards the fix along the inbound leg. Focus on these three initial paths of entry while comparing their relative positions to the aircraft in any given situation. In doing so, we can find which entry would require the least amount of turning to line up with their course. And that would be the entry to execute for the situation. Here are a few demonstrations with this concept. We have the aircraft here and it's heading towards a holding pattern cycling in this direction. And the big question, for this aircraft to enter the hold from its current position, which of the three entry type options would require the aircraft the least amount of turning upon entry? We will look at the initial segments to answer this question. 
The teardrop entry would require the aircraft to turn this much. The parallel entry would have the aircraft turn that much. And to do the direct entry, it simply wouldn't work here as the aircraft would have to be approaching from the opposite direction from where it's at now. By now, you may have already figured it out. Between the three entry types, it looks like the parallel entry is the smoothest transition for the aircraft to line up with the initial segment of the entry procedure, a smaller angle of turning compared to the teardrop entry. In adding some more sample details of a holding scenario, we can suppose the following ATC holding clearance. We are to hold northwest of the PIE vortex on the 320 degree radial, and we can expect further clearance at 1520 Zulu. From this information, we can sketch out the situation starting with a fix and then extend a radial northwest from there in the 320 direction. Note that the air traffic controller will not verbally include information that's considered standard in their clearances. Since in their instruction, left or right turn was not mentioned, so we know they want us to make right turns since right turns are standard in holding directions. So to reflect that information onto our visuals, we can track along the 320 radial towards the fix and take a right turn immediately after crossing the fix. We can complete drawing the holding course from there, the inbound leg represented by the 320 radial. Regarding the last piece of information from this ATC clearance, the EFC time, this is also important information, but not very relevant in this topic of selecting correct holding entries. So in this case, our holding pattern is cycling in this direction. Say we were heading towards the hold from here. We can again consider which of the initial segments of each entry would require the least amount of turning. So from here, we can see how the direct entry would make most sense. How about if we were heading towards the hold from this angle? In this case, it looks like the parallel entry makes the smoothest transition. And from here, the teardrop would help the aircraft be able to maintain its path as much as possible. See how this way of approaching holding pattern entries lines up with this pie chart looking diagram you may have seen before. This diagram is quite standard in textbooks and is also used for other methods for identifying holding entries. Be careful though as this diagram may be used and oriented differently for different methods, but the fundamental purpose of holding entries for any given situation remains the same. So how about if the aircraft was coming in from this angle? It looks like a parallel entry is possible, the turn looks to be minimal, but a teardrop is also not looking too intimidating either. A slight turn could be accomplished for both of these types of entries, but in this case, just pick one and commit to it. The ATC is concerned that the pilot keeps within the assigned protected area in the holding pattern until a specified time period. They're not judging you for which entry you selected to enter the holding pattern. Like, oh my gosh, look at that pilot doing a teardrop entry instead of a parallel. So no matter which method you end up choosing to identify what holding entry to use for a situation, remember the fundamental objective is to minimize the amount of turning needed for safety reasons and stay within the protected airspace because it is the area specially reserved for you by the ATC. Happy circling!